Matthew chapter 13, verse number 53. Uh, it says, And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. He's talking about all the parables of the of uh, the kingdom of heaven and the hidden treasure and the, and all the things that he gave the mission, the leaven and all the things he just taught them. It said he departed thence, verse fifty four. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man that wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? His brethren, James and Joseph and Simeon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. And he did not mind uh, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Uh, here in these verses, and of course, Jesus has gave all these uh, parables and taught all these lessons that we've used so many times. And then he goes home uh, into his own country, his own place where he was raised. And uh, he begins to say great things and talk about great things. And uh, the Bible said they were astonished at what he had to say. And they said, is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not uh, his mother named Mary and his sisters and brothers? All they saw him was Jesus. They just saw him as named Jesus. They saw him as a son. He was raised up in the carpenter's home. And they didn't realize really who he was. And they just saw him as somebody that raised in their neighborhood. Somebody that had raised up. Here's the brothers or sisters. Here's his mother and all these things. And, and the Bible says they were offended in him. And uh, then it goes on and says the prophet without, is not without honor in his own. You know, sometimes the hardest place to preach and the hardest place to serve God is your own, in your own church. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you teachers and preachers, you know that. The hardest place to do is your own place because people look at you, well, you know, that's just, uh, that's just old Christian, you know, or that's just, uh, that's just Brother Mike, or that's just so-and-so, you know. And he said, without honor. And then in verse 58, it changes. The sower changes. And this is what he says. The Bible said, And he, Jesus, did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. I'm going to preach today on he didn't and he won't. He didn't and he won't. You talk about all the wonderful things up until this chapter that Christ had done. You go back and read it. He had opened eyes. He had healed the leper. Uh, he had still the storm you see and the, when the, there was in the storm he uh, took care of a man that had a withered hand he had done all kinds of things and all kinds of works up until this time and uh, many great things that Jesus had done all, besides all the things that he had taught and the disciples and they had seen many things happen and many works done but the Bible said they just saw him as Jesus they didn't see him as who he really was and the Bible said he did not mighty, uh, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. In other words, Jesus just quit doing anything. And the thought I got to thinking about this, I wonder what he could have done if he had just believed. I wonder what would have happened. I wonder who would have got touched. I wonder who would have got healed. I wonder whose problems would have got solved if it just had enough faith to believe in him. But because of their unbelief of who he really was, the Bible said he did not mighty works. In fact, he leaves the town at that time and goes on and does many mighty works elsewhere. And, uh, but I wonder what they missed out on. I wonder what could have happened, would have happened, if it had just believed Jesus as who he really was. Well, then I got thinking about it. I wonder what would really happen in our life, what we could have talked about, what we could have enjoyed, uh, what we could be a part of if we just really believed God is who He really is. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I wonder what God would have liked to have done uh, in our, our personal life. I wonder what God would like to have done in our family life, even in our church life, our church world. I wonder, sometimes even in pastoring churches, I've wondered, and in meetings, I wonder what would really happen, what God would have really done if the church overall would just really believed 
who he was and what he could have done. I'm sure there was problems in his hometown. I'm sure there was circumstances involved that needed help. I'm sure that there was people that was carrying burdens and carrying loads. I'm sure there was probably family problems, personal problems, all kinds, and no telling what Jesus could. Can you imagine what would happen if they just turned and said, man, this is not just Jesus, the carpenter's son. This is Jesus, the Christ, who God said. This is God in the flesh. I wonder if they had turned and really believed what kind of situations would have changed and problems would have been solved. Things would have been accomplished if they had just believed. I wonder what would happen in our heart if we just believed. Amen? Uh, but, but just pulling that thought out of context, I guess, I, I want to talk about just for a few minutes on he didn't and he won't. And I think about Christ. I think about, first of all, uh, in Gethsemane, Jesus didn't back out. <laughs> Amen. Ain't you glad? Thank God. You remember the story over there in the, the book of Matthew 26? The Bible said that Jesus came to the place that's called Gethsemane. And the Bible said, he, be, he said, sit here yonder and I'll go pray. And he took uh, Peter and two of the disciples with him. And he said, my soul, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Tarry you here, watch and pray. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. And said, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. Boy, aren't you glad when he got to the garden of Gethsemane? Just think about this. When he got to the garden of Gethsemane, all the weight of my sins and your sins and the sins of the whole world was laid upon him. Amen. In that garden of Gethsemane, he began, the Bible said the pressure was so great that his sweat became as drops of blood. I mean, what kind of pressure? They say if you get so much pressure on you, my friend, that you will break out. My friend, your sweat, and my friend, that their blood will come out of your, uh, your brow, and my friend, out of your face, and out of the pores of your skin. If you get so weighted, and can you imagine the sins and the weight of the whole world laid upon him, my friend, and there he is, my friend, in the garden of Gethsemane, and my friend, he, the weight of everything is upon him, and he feels that pressure, but my friend, ain't you glad? He didn't back out. He didn't say, well, hey, wait a minute. I can't go no farther. I cannot bear the weight of the sins of the world. But the Bible said he went a little farther and said, "My, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, he could have got out of it because in Matthew 26, the same chapter, the Bible said he could have called 12 legions of angels. Uh, I, I can't imagine. Brother James said that. Them angels sitting up there, sitting up there around the throne room, and they sit down and look, and here's Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. All the weights of the sin of my sins and the sins of the whole world is being laid upon him. And the pressure is so great. His countenance changed, and the weight of sin is so heavy, and the, uh, the blood is pouring down. And them angels just said, man, man, God, just get, let us go. Let us go. And I believe he had just looked up and said, I can't take it. I believe personally that 12 legions of angels have come, and my friend delivered him. A boy, you glad he didn't back out at Gethsemane, but he went a little farther. Amen. I'm telling you, if he'd have backed out in Gethsemane, we'd have been sunk. <laughs> it'd been over. We'd had no hope. We'd still been offering sacrifices. We'd still been offering something that would cover our sins for a year, looking for a Savior, looking for a Redeemer. But I'm glad, thank God, he didn't back out in the garden of Gethsemane. Then I'll say, second of all, my friend, he didn't come down at Calvary. <laughs> Can you imagine when he's on Calvary? He's done past Gethsemane now, Brother James. He's done past that. <coughs> and there, the blood, as he heads to Calvary, uh, my friend, blood's already, uh, my friend, on his face and already on the pores of his skin. And he's already under that such pressure of the weight of the world. And they take him to Calvary. And on the way to Calvary, my friend, they beat him and, and gnash upon him with their teeth and they, they do all kinds of things. They crown him with thorns and, and they, they, they beat his back and plow it open. And, and my friend, they do all kinds of things that, and, uh, to our Savior. And my friend, that things that my, the stripes that he took was my stripes. And the bodies he took should have been my bodies. And, and the crown of thorns that he took should have been my crown of thorns. And, and the buffins that he took should have been my buffins. And, and the nails that they placed in his hands and the nails that they placed in his feet it should have been my feet that was nailed to that cross I, I was 
the guilty one. I was the one that needed to die. I was the one that deserved to die. And thank God, but thank God when he got to Calvary, yeah, my friend hanging on that cross, yeah, ain't you glad, thank God he didn't come down. Yeah, that thief on the cross looked at him and said, hey, you saved others. Yeah, why don't you save us? Yeah, you saved others. Get us down here from the cross. Yeah, he could have. Yeah. But my friend, that other thief looked and said, hey, yeah, don't you know who this really is? Yeah, and he looked at him and said, remember me when I come into my kingdom. Don't come down from here. It's the only hope we got. Yeah, boy, aren't you glad God didn't come down from Calvary yeah, and said, I can't take no more. I'm finished. Yeah, I'm going back, thank God. Yeah. But my friend, he listen, the Bible said in the book of Philippians, uh, he has been found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yeah. Boy, aren't you glad, thank God, yeah, he didn't come down from Calvary. Yeah, but he stayed there, and my friend, he gilded up the ghost, yeah, and they didn't kill him at Calvary. Yeah. Thank God, when they come around that day, they'd come around and pierce him with swords. Yeah. My friend, he would rush for blood and water. Yeah. My friend, the other two, yeah, they come around and pierced him, but when they looked at him, yeah, he was already gone. Yeah. He had already yielded up the ghost. Yeah. Boy, aren't you glad he didn't come down at Calvary. Yeah. If he'd have come down at Calvary, yeah, if he'd have said, I can't go no farther, yeah, we'd have been without hope yeah, and without any way of my friend being saved. Yeah. Hell would have been our destination and no way out. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad he didn't come down at Calvary. I don't know about you. I'd probably, when I got to thinking about you, and I, if I was up there thinking, well, I'm doing this for, I'm doing this for Slick. Amen. I'm doing this for Thad. I'm doing this for Tammy. You know what I said? Forget it. Uh, they ain't worth it. I don't love them that much. Uh, boy, aren't you glad my friend God so loved us? Uh, thank God that he said, yeah, uh, I'll die for him. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Uh, brother God, they ain't nothing but an old drunk. I'll take them. Uh, they ain't nothing but an old heart. I'll take them. Uh, I ain't coming down. I'm going all the way. Uh, I'm going to pay the debt. I'm going to pay the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to finish this work. Uh, and thank God he did not back out at, uh, at Gethsemane and he didn't come down thank God from Calvary but he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross yeah. amen then I'll say something else not only he didn't back out my friend had Gethsemane and he didn't come down from Calvary but my friend he didn't stay dead yeah. <laughs> the Bible said they took him my friend they placed him my friend in my friend a tomb and my friend they buried him there and you know what Muhammad Muhammad, he, he died, and guess what? He's still dead. <laughs> Joseph Smith thought he was the greatest. He know, he was the Savior, but you know what? He died, they still got a grave. Amen? <laughs> I, I, I see the commentary. I, I like to watch commentaries, and I like to watch the History Channel, and, and, uh, and they do some good stuff sometimes. And I was watching here a while back, and they had a, they had a program on about uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, different things, and I, I was watching it. And, and you know, they got that, that uh, Joseph Smith, they got a grave. They got a grave where he was buried. And they, the, they hauled people busloads in there, and they visited that grave, <laughs> you know. And I'm thinking, you know, he, he was supposed to be the Savior. They buried there. He never came out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, my friend, when they buried our Savior a few days later, my friend, them women's going up there and they're going to put some spices on him and that angel sitting on that stone. They said, why seek you the living among the dead? He's not here. He risen. Thank God I'm glad he didn't stay dead, but he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Thank God that day, that day, my friend, they buried him in that tomb. My friend, they put guards around. Can't you imagine? I believe the, the devil was there. And my friend, can you imagine Satan come by and said, death angel you got him you got a hold of him they said oh yeah we got him that second day he come around and he said Mr. Death Angel you got him oh I got him it's been two days I think we got him this time but I'll tell you on that third day that devil come around he said Mr. Death Angel and there wasn't no death angel and my friend he said hey what happened I said thank God he arose and my friend victorious over death hell in the grave he stole the keys to hell he's risen where's he gone he's ascended back to the heaven weren't you glad he didn't stay dead if he had stayed dead we would have had no hope but thank God because he arose we have a living hope because he is alive and forevermore he is alive I'm glad he didn't stay dead <laughs> amen <laughs> what hope would you have in a dead savior I was in Mexico years ago I was in Mexico and they had a parade and the Catholics had a parade down there and 
and uh, we was down there in the missionary. He, I, I said, "What is that?" He said, "That's a prayer." He said, uh, "They're they're celebrating uh, uh, the Christ died, and and they came to they came filling down through there and uh, marching, and and they had all kind of different singers and different all this all decked out, you know, but that and he's come down and right in the middle of it, they, they had a casket, an open glass casket, that, and they had a a, a, a mummy laying in there. It, it was a uh, picture of what we know Jesus looked like according to the world. He don't look like that according to the Bible, but it's what you thought he would look like and they came down through there and they had him in that glass casket and it's rolling down through there and they're celebrating you know what I looked at that thing and before I could brother Christian before I could even say anything I thought to myself and I said right out loud I said that ain't my savior he ain't dead no casket somewhere but thank God he arose victorious over death hell and the grave went down to hell my friend led captivity kept him out of paradise sent him back to the father off in his own blood sat down and satisfied God. I'm glad he didn't. He did not. My friend, God stayed dead, but he arose. Have a living, resurrected Savior. Just to be honest with you, he could have he could have went to Gethsemane. And he could have went to he could have went to Calvary. And then he could have went to the grave. Amen. And he could have quit. We wouldn't have had nothing. Amen. I tell you, our salvation all stems around the fact that he arose victorious. Amen. If he had a resurrected Christian, we wouldn't have no hope. Right. Amen. But I'll tell you what, we'd still, we'd still been like the Catholics, <laughs> worshiping an a, a, a idol. Right. Amen. Not hard on the Catholics, they just wrong. Amen. Right. Who wants to study? Hey, I, 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 listen, I'm not so stupid. I'm 71 years old, but I ain't stupid enough to bow down to some idol. Got right. eyes and can't see and ears and can't hear. And don't die on me. Amen. <laughs> just because you've got Catholic friends, you ought to be telling them what's really right. Amen. I'm not worshiping. I've seen them in Mexico. I've seen them bow down. I've seen them bow down to them statues and idols and cry and weep. And my, I've seen them. Uh, uh, Brother Slick walk in. Uh, uh, let me just it, it, let me just illustrate like this. Uh, I've seen them, Brother Thad, come in. I remember one particular lady came in. Uh, my just sadness and countenance on her heart. Uh, her face is just showed. Uh, she was broken, uh, probably full of sin uh, in her lives. And, and came in that day looking for some hope. Uh, and he went in that little old booth. Uh, and that uh, priest told her, some things. I don't know what he told her, but he told her something. Uh, and she came back out slick. And she went over to this aisle. Uh, and she bowed down and gave a little offering and said a few things to that aisle. She went over to another one. Uh, put a little offering in and said some things and got up. Uh, and as she started out the door, uh, my friend, her sad countenance was still sad. Uh, my friend, her heart was still crushed. Uh, no change in her life. Uh, you know why she bowed down to a God uh, and to an idol that had nothing, uh, had no life. Uh, but I tell you what, I've seen a many come down these altars, uh, broken and sinful and pushed uh, and my friend bow down before the living resurrected Lord uh, and surrender their life and get up uh, and their countenance is changed the joy is back uh, and their life is changed uh, I'm glad uh, I serve a living resurrected Lord uh, and I'm glad thank God he did not stay dead uh, but he rose victorious over death hell and the grave might as well say amen amen he didn't back out at Gethsemane he didn't come down at Calvary and he didn't stay dead at their tomb at the resurrection then I'll say something else he didn't fail to send the Holy Spirit at Pentecost <laughs> you know when he left here you know what he said he said I'm going away according to the book of John he said I'm going away and he said I will come again and then he also said in the book of uh, John he talks about my friend when I go away he said I will send another let me read this to you I pray the Father he shall give you another comforter that means one just like myself that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him you, but we, you know him for he dwelleth in you and so he said I'm going away and when I get there I'm going to send the Holy Spirit back Amen. boy ain't you glad I'm glad ain't you glad he didn't back out on that promise Amen, Amen. See, in the Old Testament days, the Holy Spirit would come, fall upon him, and leave. The Holy Ghost would come, move over here, fall upon somebody like Samson. The Holy Ghost would come upon Samson, and then he would leave. And my friend, he would come up and move in another way, and my friend, he would leave. But thank God, Jesus said, I'm going away. And when I go away, I'm going to send one just like myself. And said, guess what? He's going to be with you forever, so he shall dwell within you. <laughs> I don't know about you. Boy, that great day at Pentecost, they, my friend, they was over there praying. Jesus didn't call, fall upon him because there's a prayer. And he was come anyway. Jesus would have come. Somebody said there's a prayer and the Holy Ghost fell upon him. I'll tell you what, that's true. But I'll tell you what, he's a coming whether there's a prayer or not. 
Because Jesus said he's a coming. He just said that's a pretty good place to fall, I guess. And you know, and what the Holy Ghost fell that day, and my friend upon them, and my friend great movement of God fell upon them. And ever since then, my friend, since Calvary, when you get saved and trust Christ, guess what? The Holy Ghost comes and lives within our heart. Soon to be 64 years I've been saved. And the day I got saved, the Holy Ghost come and lives in my heart. Guess what? He never left me one day. <laughs> I may have grieved him, pushing him over in the corner somewhere, but he ain't never left. He's in there. He's in there to stay. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of glad he's in there to stay, Brother Slick, because one of these days the shout's going to come from heaven. And guess what? When that shout comes from heaven, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to hear it. Thank yeah. God we're going out of here. I might not hear it if it's on my own. Amen. That, I'm telling you what, the Holy Ghost is connected to that little world. And when Jesus stands with a shout, he's going to come, and the Holy Ghost is going to say, Let's go, Goodson, and we're out of here. <laughs> Aren't you glad God sent the Holy Spirit? Can you imagine trying to make it in this life and didn't have the Holy Spirit? <laughs> The Bible talks about here, uh, my friend, in the book of Acts, uh, my friend, he talks about in Acts chapter number 2, he talks about how the Holy Ghost came and fell upon them. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, he talks about when the Holy Ghost came at day of Pentecost, uh, he came and he fell upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak in other tongues as a spirit. Now listen, that other tongue wasn't that jibber-jabber, bow-tie Volkswagen stuff. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> If you look that up, if you look that up, my friend, it means other languages. See, there was all kinds of different people there. Nations was there. And every man heard it, spoke in their own language. Amen. God never has sanctioned that jibber-jabber stuff. Amen. <laughs> you know what the Bible says, and I don't want to get on this with killer service, but, but uh, the Bible says if, if you're going to have somebody speaking in tongues, there's got to be an interpreter there. Amen. So next time you hear somebody jibber jabbering like that, say, hey, you know what you said? They said, no. Just tell them God gave you the gift of interpretation and just tell them some awful wall something. <laughs> I did that one time over, over at Brother Jack Shook's church years ago. I was preaching, the woman jumped up and started speaking in tongues. And, and, and I'm preaching. And Brother Jack looked at me. He's the pastor. He looked at me. And I looked at that woman. I said, and when she sat down, I said, ma'am, you know what you said? I just stopped preaching, Brother Christian. I said, you know what you said? She said, no, I have no idea. I was talking to God. I said, well, the Bible says you got an interpreter. I said, anybody here know what she said? Didn't nobody know what she said. I said, well, God's given me the gift of interpretation. I said, God, I, I said, you know what you said? You said you was right around on your husband. Going to divorce him any day. She said, that ain't what I said. I said, you didn't say, you said you didn't know what you said. <laughs> nobody else in here knows what you said, but I know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get up no more either, amen. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, ain't a bunch of jibber-jabber, my friend, but you know what, it's a language. And I'm going to tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes and speaks, He'll move in your heart. No matter who you are, the Holy Ghost will move and speak to your heart. Then the Bible talks about when the Holy Ghost has come. In John chapter 14, He talks about when He has come, He will what? Guide you in all truths. The Bible talks about he'll bring conviction. Now, he'll guide you. Listen, when the Holy Ghost has come, and my friend, he shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance. When the Holy Ghost has come, I will send unto you, he shall testify of me. Yeah, my friend, he talks about, my friend, how the Holy Ghost is going to come, and when he does come, he'll speak and guide and glorify and teach. My friend, I don't know about you, I'm glad the Holy Ghost, that I'm glad he didn't back out. I'm glad he's going to sit the Holy Ghost and dwells in our heart. How can we make it without the Holy Spirit living in our hearts you ever run across a verse in the Bible that you don't understand <laughs> you go down to the bookstore and look at them commentaries guess what they skipped it too <laughs> I used to buy them commentaries and take them home brother Christian I got word now I look at them and I say if they skipped that verse I, that's the verse I want if they're going to skip it I ain't paying $25 for that book they skipped it too and I'll tell you what, ain't you glad you got the Holy Ghost? You get on the verse you don't know. You can get off some word in your Bible, get on your knees and begin to pray. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will show you exactly what. My dad, my dad years ago, he 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 come out of one of these homilinous churches. I don't even know about them, but they believe you know church is gonna go through tribulation and all that stuff. And he was raised in that stuff. That's what he that the, what he was taught. And uh, but when he got up and, and, and started preaching, uh, he'd preach it because they preached it, but he said he never felt comfortable preaching that stuff. 
and said so, uh, he'd go to other meetings and they'd preach it different and he'd go back to his church and that's what they'd preach and, and said he got daddy got his Bible one day and he went back up in the woods and he said God I know this group preaches this and this preaches that and God I want to know I want to know what's right and he said up there about all day up there in the woods with his Bible and brother James he said it wasn't long the Holy Ghost come and showed him right down through there said he'd come down off that hill said he was a pretty trip my, my friend he was the church going to go out of here before the tribulation he preached it all the way till he died you know why the Holy Ghost revealed it to him in the Scriptures. He's glad to have the Holy Spirit and comforts our heart. Speaks to us. God just helps us make decisions. Helps us in our life. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm glad he didn't fail to send the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. I would have never been convicted if it hadn't been for the Holy Spirit. The Word would just have been a dead book, a dead message. I'd hate to. Hey, listen, I've been it a few times. James, I don't know if y'all ever done this or not, but I've preached a time or two without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't like that. I mean, you preach on your own, buddy. Amen? You just preach on your own. You're, 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 you know what you do when you get... The only thing about, about preaching on your own, Brother James, is usually when you're preaching on your own, you know, you don't really have the touch of the Holy Spirit in your life and you're trying to preach it. <laughs> it's one of them messages you can't find nowhere to quit. And it's dead at 4 o'clock. You can't find nowhere to cut it off. Amen? Boy, when he comes and he speaks and he, he gives you liberty to preach, man, friend, what a blessing it is just to have the Holy Ghost that speaks through our hearts. And guides us and helps us. Can you imagine making it without the Holy Spirit? Boy, you glad? I'm glad you didn't back out at Gethsemane. He didn't come down at Calvary. He didn't stay dead in the tomb. He didn't fail to send the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to say something else. He didn't fail to accomplish his purpose. Huh? He said it's finished. And he sat down at the right hand of the Father. When he set out, he said, it's over. Salvation's complete. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Amen. And I'm glad, thank God, somebody mentioned this morning. Uh, maybe I heard it on a message uh, uh, this morning. I was listening on television. But uh, you know what? The Bible said he sat down at the right hand of the Father, and he's sitting there making intercession for us. Uh, <laughs> he's sitting there pleading our case. When he sat down, he meant his purpose is fulfilled. I came, I was raised, and my friend, I went to Calvary. And I, well, I'd done a, a, a miracle ministry, and then I went to Calvary and I died. I was buried, I resurrected. I sent it down to the heart of the earth. They had captive, the captive, sent it back to heaven. And my friend satisfied God and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And he's sitting there now making intercession for you and for me. That's why the Bible said, let, for, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I got a throne of grace. Can you imagine what it would be like if we didn't have a throne of grace? Aren't you glad God didn't leave us out here on our own? <laughs> Amen. Aren't you glad He didn't leave us out here on our own? By ourselves. Uh, my, well, this is, this is funny. Don't, don't, uh, don't like, you can laugh this real too, but Kay, Kay's mother passed away. And her, her dad passed away. All of her aunts passed away. All of her uncles. And she don't have, really have no immediate family. And she's sitting there one day, a day feeling sorry for herself, I guess. I hope she ain't watching this. But uh, she's feeling sorry for herself, you know. She said, well, uh, you know, my, my dad's gone, my mom's gone. And said, I said, all my kin folks is gone. And said, and, and all and said uh, you know, it's funny, all the family's gone. And said, I'm just kind of left alone. I spoke up and I said, no, you got me. Uh, she turned around and looked at me. <laughs> she said, what? I said, you got me. I said, I'm one helping you, feed you, and clothe you, take care of you. I'm the one who loves you. You got me. And sometimes you feel alone by yourself. Boy, ain't you glad, brother, how the Holy Ghost speaks this way? You got me. Thank God you got a throne room you can go to. You got a God that loves you. You got a God that's making it. I don't know about you. I'm glad. Thank God he finished it and completed it. And now we have continual permanent access to the throne room of God. Oh, what a blessing it is. Uh, to have God. Have access to God. Through the Holy Spirit. See, when you pray, the Holy Spirit takes over in Romans, I don't have time to deal with all this, but over in Romans, you know, he talks about the Holy Spirit makes intercession. See, when you pray, the Holy Ghost makes it up to Christ. He presents it to Christ. Christ presents it to the Father. The Father presents the, the need or the help or whatever he's going to do back to the, to the Son. And the Son's puts it back to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes back and speaks to your heart comforts your heart and dwells within your heart 
Well, aren't you glad that transaction worked good? <laughs> aren't you glad, thank God, he didn't fail. He didn't fail. To, you ever, you ever, you ever, no, all you ladies right here, this is a good place for y'all to get in on this. You ever had your husband start something and he ain't never finished it? <laughs> I know you ladies are afraid to say amen, afraid he won't buy your dinner today. Uh, but we're, we're professionals at that, but Thad, you probably ain't never done that. You start to, you know, start to do something. My son, my, my younger son, he started, he started painting his living room. He called me one day and said, I'm off today, I'm going to paint my living room. <laughs> I'm going over the other day and it still ain't painted. <laughs> he's got, he's got it, he's got it, the walls, he got it trimmed in, got about half up painted. I said, I thought you was painting the living room, it don't take long. <laughs> he said, well, I, 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 I've got to start. His wife said, yeah. Said he started three weeks ago, ain't finished it yet. Uh, still ain't finished it. Uh, and when you walk in there, it's like an unfinished task. You walk in there, I don't care, I don't care how pretty the couch is. I got a cat and dog. I don't care how pretty the cat and dog is. I don't care what kind of food they got. First thing you see, unpainted wool. Half done. Half finished. Huh? Come on now, help me out. <laughs> you ever do that? Get something about half done and leave it? Amen. And your wife, you know, they always, they always got wisdom. You know, when you're going to finish that? They don't thank you for what you've already done. Is what you're going to finish that? You know? <laughs> Come on now. Uh, but what you glad? He wasn't halfway done, halfway job. But he finished it. It's complete, sealed over, done. Nothing else can be accomplished. Nothing else can be done. Amen. Aren't you glad he didn't fail to finish and accomplish his mission? So, so he, didn't, he didn't back out at Gethsemane. He didn't come down at Calvary. He didn't stay dead in the tomb, the resurrection. He didn't fail to send the Holy Spirit. He didn't uh, fail to accomplish his mission. But I don't say last of all, he won't stay gone. <laughs> Amen. Thank God he promised us. Thank God he promised us. He said, if I let not your hearts be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house for many mansions. What I saw, I would have told you. I go to prayer place for you. And if I go, I will come again. <laughs> Why aren't you glad he ain't going to stay gone? The Bible said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, the the dead in Christ arise first. We which are alive remain shall be called together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Bible said when the disciples looked there and Jesus was being trapped, laid it up and sent it up into heaven, the Bible said the angel looked at him and said, Hey, the same Jesus which you shall go, saw go away shall come again in line. Boy, aren't you glad he ain't going to leave us? He, he will. He will. <laughs> he ain't going to stay gone. He's coming. He's coming. Amen. He is coming back. I was talking to, him, I was talking to my boy the other day, my youngest son, and uh, he's, got all, he's got all excited wrapped up in the church he goes to and I'm so proud of him and uh, they, they, they fixing to uh, go ahead and put him in as a deacon and I'm just thrilled about what's going on in his life as a Christian he's praying and he sent me a text the other day he said daddy you ever think about it? he said I'm just sitting there thinking you ever thought about this did you ever think about sitting up in heaven after we get to heaven just sitting around sitting up there and just looking around at God <laughs> I said well I never thought about it like that son by the time the phone rang, he, uh, he said, I'm just sitting there thinking, man, we're going to sit in heaven. He said, you know what? All the streets of gold, the gates of pearl, all that stuff's going to be okay. But can you imagine just sitting around for about a thousand years just looking at God? <laughs> and said, because of him. <laughs> but Slick, you may come by. Say, what are you doing, Brother Mike? I'm just looking up here. Hey, Slick, because of him. We're here. <laughs> huh? Ain't you glad he's going to? He's going to come back. What's he going to tell you? My youngest son, uh, he, he was telling me the other day, he's talking, he was down there at his church where he goes, and, and uh, we went down to visit and go to church with him, and, and uh, he was talking with some of us guys that are talking. He said, you know, he said, Daddy traveled all up and down the road for years when I was a kid. First 10 years of his life, I was gone all the time. And he said, Daddy would always say, with the Christian Daddy, would always, he said, Daddy would always say, he's just a little boy, he said, Daddy would always say, I'm going to the meeting but I'll be back. I'll be back Friday night, or I'll be back Wednesday night, or I'll be back Sunday night. I'll be back. And, and I didn't know where he was going with that. <laughs> Brother Josh, he looked at me and said, you know what? Not one time did he ever fail to come back. <laughs> but Jesus said he's coming back. <laughs> and I got news for you. He's coming back. 
<laughs> we, we may be nearer than you think we are, but he's coming back. You said, hey, you know he's coming back because he said he would. <laughs> and I looked at that boy and I said, son, I said, uh, I never thought about that way. And I said, what, what made you hold on to the fact that I was coming back? He said, well, you never had lied to me yet. <laughs> and you never failed to show up. And you made a promise and you never broke one yet. I know just coming. Well, God ain't never lied to me. He ain't never failed to fulfill one of his promises. And you can bank on it. He coming back. I'm ready. I've lost 24, 24 preachers. From last January till today, I've lost 24 preachers. Died this past year. Four preachers' wives that I know of. There may have been some that I don't know of. But 24 that I started out with down through the day. And I look back and see all that stuff going back. And all the things that's happening in our world today. I'm going to tell you when Jesus said, when you see all these things coming to pass, look up. Redemption, dog. The question is, are you ready? when he comes. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.